Hello everyone and welcome to the EVN Disrupt podcast. My name is Nejdet Satrugan. I'm the editor of the tech section here at EVN Report. My guest today was Agman Atoyan, the founder and CEO of augmented reality company Arlupa. We spoke about Arlupa's app and how it enables creators to build AR content and experiences easily with no coding. We spoke about the various applications AR currently has and will have in the new future with the advent of new technologies such as the Apple Vision Pro. And at the end, we had a fun conversation about the ethical implications of AR technology. Thank you for listening. All right, man. Thank you so much for being here today. Sure. Thank you for inviting me. <laughs> Let's start with a little bit of your background and the story of how our Lupa got started. Uh, when did you first even hear about the like mixed reality world or VR and AR? Yeah, but just like a little bit about my background. Uh, I have master's degree in mathematics. Uh, when I was 14, I already been dreaming to become a programmer. Uh, sometimes I'm referring to Matrix. I'm saying that was the trigger that I decided that I want to be a programmer. And maybe the love into the virtual world started from the Matrix. Probably something unconsciously triggered me maybe uh -huh. to do what I'm doing right now. So AR side of the things, uh, we've been uh, doing the mobile games. We've been doing the apps, uh, all sort of like a web mobile applications. And uh, in 2012, first time I came across with the AR, that time it was a desktop experience. So the AR was happening on the PC while you've been scanning the marker on the camera. Mm -hmm. So there's a camera connected to, to, to the computer? PC, yeah. And... yeah, it could be webcam or something like that. Or before that, we've been doing also the Kinect based AR as well, that even that time we've not been calling it AR. Connect was the, the Microsoft, Microsoft Xbox Microsoft device, system. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so uh, we, 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 we understood that this is the kind of cool thing, but we didn't pay a lot of attention. Mm -hmm. However, in 2013, when we started to see that this is coming to the mobile, so the mobile devices are getting enough power to render the AR content, that was the aha moment. We said, oh, okay, now this, this, this is going to be populated because if the devices can render, in, in further, uh, this is going to be like a big market for this. Was there a specific device launch? Like was the iPhone 5 in 2013 uh, came about and that was good enough? Or? Uh, I will barely remember what iPhone yeah. was at that time. But like uh, on the Androids and on the iPhones, the first, it was very glitchy. It was not like high quality. So in 2013, we understood this. In 2014, we had a clear understanding that we want to get into this space. And we launched the Arlupa. Uh, well, at the beginning, we've been thinking like to start within the own app, but later on, it turned it into the kind of like a, a range of the apps on the different verticals, and uh, also we get into the VR as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so the the main idea probably was that time when we understood that this is coming, and we have seen some of the applications that was mostly on the marketing side, and we saw a lot of value in that that this interaction creates like engagement with the users in the totally another level. Like that was the first time when we stood the people like uh, loving the ads and they are sharing the ads with the others. Right. So that was kind of like interesting discovery that this medium is allowing people to be not just engaged, but also share these experiences with others. What did AR ads look like back then? Uh, like how, how would someone launch it? Because to... To get an AR experience, you kind of have to, in a way, go out of your way to launch it, right? Yes. Because you're, uh, you're very rarely in an AR native environment. Yeah. So how did the ads actually work? The, 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 the one first apps, like our, maybe the biggest competitor at that time, the Bleepart, had the app that was actively working in the UK market. And uh, the first use cases that we have seen, those was the product packagings and the different type of activations. Mm -hmm. So imagine you are scanning, uh, let's say, milk pack, and this comes alive. It says interactive experience. Sometimes it could be gamified. Mm -hmm. So it's very interesting, engaging way of engage the users within the brand. Mm -hmm. So this was the first kind of experiences that we've been seeing. Uh, we quickly understood that the, in the education, this is going to be huge because we understood that uh, like uh, the books can be turned into the more interactive environments where the kids can see a lot of uh, things in a more immersive way. And they can understand a lot of difficult processes that just by reading you cannot mm -hmm. imagine or see. 
because of the visualization yeah, visualization of it. gives more engagement right right and so at the time you guys were um building these uh ar ads and stuff for, for other companies yeah we right? started at the beginning we started like when we just started uh, our aim was to validate that that someone is ready to sort of pay for that mm -hmm. uh, and we went to the coca-cola armenia we went to their office we presented the idea that time our loop app was just launched maybe we had there like less than a 1000 downloads mm -hmm. and we said we want to do the campaign within the our loop app uh, they they've been really impressed by the tech and uh, like how cool is that but they said no we want to have our own app because we are the coca-cola we cannot be in the other app that has right. 1000 downloads sure uh later like the next years uh, instead of building another app they've been doing the campaigns within the Arlupa. but that was the first kind of things that we started to approach this project the, this concept to the different companies mainly in the marketing purpose mm -hmm. and the Arlupa app is just a way for users to immerse themselves in AR experiences because it's not native to the phone yes, yes it's not native to the phone uh, mm -hmm. unfortunately if someday we will get big enough maybe uh, we will agree with the yeah. phone producers to have the app natively embedded in the uh, in mm -hmm. the devices i meant native like a phone doesn't come with ar capabilities i guess your phone comes phone comes through just by you mean just by the camera yep yeah. you you just need to have the app uh, right. the capabilities are there because the first version of our lupa it was uh, image recognition and image tracking Mm -hmm. So it was recognizing the image and placing the 3D content or video content or audio content over the scanned marker. And at the mm -hmm. beginning, it was just a scanner. Uh, so we started as a scanner, but now we are ended up, we, we not ended up, but we grow into the many verticals. So almost all kind of AR functionalities, now Arduba app is supporting. Mm -hmm. And the aim was to build a platform that kind of single app that can serve for all these needs because we've been seeing that on many cases there was the app that was ju just dedicated to one book so mm -hmm. in order you you buy the book you need to get that app right and we understood that this is this is kind of like a wrong mm -hmm. we should build something universal and uh, that will be something like uh, we are calling it sometimes like a magnifying glasses so if you have magnifying glasses, you can study biology or you can, I don't know, do <laughs> anything right. you want. General purpose. So it's a tool. Yeah. It's it's a tool that helps you to see more. Mm -hmm. And the same vision we put into the Arduba. That's a tool that can help you on one case, go to museum and unlock interactive experiences. It can help you to gain more knowledge from a book or it can have the immersive um, experience like entertainment. You can have the Serge Tankian singing in your room. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, the, the aim and the, the vision was to build one platform that can have everything in it. Mm -hmm. Right. And what does the app look like today? How has it evolved since then? Uh, it goes pretty well. Uh, but we also, another transformation that happened to, to our Lupa, like within a few years of like a serving as a studio, understanding like what are the needs. For instance, the magazine comes to us and asks, hey guys, we want to have our magazine like to come alive with your app. So we understood those patterns. We understood what the people need, what marketing agencies need, what the creatives need, what the artists need. And we have created the tool, uh, which is non-code AR content created platform that everyone without any technical knowledge can create an AR experiences. Mm. And this was kind of like a um, very important step in our direction because that helps us to scale. Mm -hmm. So now uh, museum in UK, can create the exhibition, put everything into the AR, into the Arlupa, and we might be not involved at all. Right. They just right. buy the subscription, they get the package, and they're creating everything their own. Sometimes if they face some difficulties, they might reach out to support by asking how I can do this and that. But overall, we, we came to the stage that we created self-service tool that the people are leveraging. And sometimes we are also amazed what, what kind of creative stuff they can come with. Mm -hmm. And uh, another important thing that uh, we, we are proud of, like we now have uh, 7 million organic installs on the Android and about like a one more than a million on the iOS mm -hmm. that we didn't spend any single dollar on the user acquisition. Mm -hmm. Uh, we believe uh, that uh, it's not time yet. Some people might ask, like, why so? Because, like, we believe that 
didn't really time came yet for for what you mean um, yeah. because like a lot of people are still not understanding the applications hmm. a lot of people are still not know about that right you mean it's sometimes, still early. sometimes yeah. i'm saying like uh, we are not rich enough to educate the market so we will let the meta and google and That's able to educate so, right and when there is the right time we can scale with the paid uh, user acquisition mm -hmm. to any number because if there are only there are not many apps that have let's say four thirty thousand reviews and their score is 4.5 or 4.6 without artificially boosting this mm -hmm. rating because i believe we have created something that the people love and even now if you will open the twitter for instance like search the arlupa and look to the latest posts mm -hmm. we are nowadays trending in the gulf region mm -hmm. So Oman, Saudi, like a lot of people are without our influence posting that, hey guys, check this out. This is great app for teachers. This is great app to keep the kids engaged. And there's a lot of educational value in it. But we never want to have just in one niche. Like we never want to have just for education. It's Again, general purpose. It's a general purpose. It's a magnifying glass, apply wherever you mm. want. What do you credit that like user engagement to? Uh, like uh, just the excitement around the app you said you guys haven't done any big marketing campaign spent any money on user acquisition how did you guys go about then then getting seven million downloads on on android uh no single dollar has been spent on the user acquisition as we know it like p paying the apple ads or google ads or having the ads of course we've been doing a lot of activities sometimes those activities are proxy activities imagine uh when we are sort of uh Made in, ma ma making the way that using the Arduino platform is much more affordable than creating another app. Mm -hmm. Brands are using our own platform instead of creating another app. Mm -hmm. And once they do it, right. they became our channel of the advertisement. Right, right. So if... Um, it's like a chain effect. Yeah. If, if let's say the museum in uk is utilizing the arlupa to create this digital experience this digital exhibition what he does he says download the arlupa app and come to museum to experience the um, like uh, old egyptian exhibition with the arlupa app so that will cost us like a few thousand pounds to have this advertisement in uk mm -hmm. the same way you can consider any other cases as well being it museum, being yeah. it product, we made it in a way that it's affordable to to even not like big brands or even not like a big budgets uh, museums. We have different plans. Even individuals can use it. And uh, we are seeing that uh, this organically goes and goes uh, because like one teacher using it, they are seeing like a good value in that and they are creating the video blog on the YouTube as well. You can go to YouTube, just search Arlupa and look for last, let's say, month's videos. Mm -hmm. You will see the people all across the world, from Taiwan to anywhere you want, like yeah. Saudi, um, where the teachers or the students are featuring us. Mm -hmm. They're saying, hey, we have found some great app that has this capability. And most of them are still on the user level when they will grow into the creator level and they will start creating a content that will even yeah. grow higher because yeah. it's one thing when you are just like using the content that is there we have about 2000 experiences in the app but with the creation you are getting a superpower like you are doing here the magazine right like it's digital but imagine you have anything printed mm -hmm. you can do yourself create the content mm -hmm. Or imagine you are creating some, like for your podcasts, you are creating the product. It could be the mug or it could be the magnet and saying this is living magnet. So each month I'm putting there the short version of my podcasts mm -hmm. and you can scan on your fridge and see what's new. Even if you are not remember to go to the YouTube right. search and find my postcard, but you still can remember, oh, let's see what, what's new we have with Nijde. Mm -hmm. So Eventually, you created the product that utilizes our product. So we gave you value. Right. You are happy to stay with us because you also get some cool thing that you can market 
as as your product and you are now leveraging on us but but giving your value mm-hmm. so you guys have this no code plot the content creation side is really interesting you guys have this no code platform that businesses and like organizations can use for their campaigns but i as just like a regular consumer can also use it to build ar apps how do you AR content AR content i'm sorry AR content how do you envision me or like the average content uh creator like a an instagrammer or a tiktoker or something um who builds content who creates content for those platforms the ar content that they make uh, is there like a social component to it that they're sharing it on a feed or something with their friends or how are they getting that content into into the world let's let's differentiate from? those two things so the content the first type of content is ar content that evolves ar models into the videos or photos so for that they are using our libraries okay so uh, let's say one of the armenian the most known influencers uh, Ruben Yesayan. Mm-hmm. He a lot of time using the R Lupa to have like uh, augmented uh, objects okay. yeah. in his videos. Okay. And yeah. that resonates great. Like you can check the feed, the ones that has these components. Like he stays in the front of the Kamar business center and he looks left and there is like entire galactic on his right, head. Right. Of course, this video is resonates. And then, sorry, just before you move on, for that, and then like, is the, there's a way for that to be recorded just from Absolutely. the screen and just say, right, we have the video right. capture function, right. so everyone can record. If they are not paid, we are getting the watermark right. in their videos. So that helps us right. to kind of like gain more users. Right. So that's not even just um, like creating. This is not, yeah, it's like most people think of AR, they think of like pointing their phone at something and seeing something, but that's more even just like video production. That was that was 2013 to 2017. Right, right yeah. To, point, to point something yeah. <laughs> to, <laughs> to see the AR number. content. Yeah. Got it. Now you don't need anything. Right. You just point the, like you are selecting the, I don't want to say even object because that could be entire gaming experience like the quest that can happen in any environment. So you just open the experience, it projects in your environment, the objects are interactive. Mm-hmm. It could be the like Egyptian portal that you can walk in and play a game. Mm-hmm. Uh, but again, the big vision behind of this is uh, we are we are thinking that the market is not there, as I said. Uh, we believe that the bigger wave is going to come with the headsets. Like uh, and now we are seeing the first glimpses. The Apple announced mm-hmm. last year that they are going to bring to the market in 2024 the Apple Vision Pro. Just before we get to the headsets, mm-hmm. uh, I cut sure. you off earlier. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so there's there's t- the two co- the two components. You can use it in your content creation, and then the other side, I think you were going to say, was the creating. The, right, the creating the of creating. the AR experiences. Uh, the creating. Uh, there are a lot of individuals who are creating also content. But most of the use cases, the most of the clients we have, they are doing it for purpose. So either they are creating and uh, let's say adding some interactivity to their physical products, Mm -hmm. or uh, the artists are creating another layers of their arts. The NFT creators been leveraging a lot onto the AR platform because they've been creating the geolocation based, like they've been making their own Pokemon Go's. Hmm, with okay. our platform without without knowing anything in the, the how does the N- how do nfts go into it like uh, so let me give you an example there was a collection of earth invaders that was like a f- small funny characters and the guy in the cyprus has created the scavenger hunt if you are going within the r loop app and finding those creatures taking the photos with them and uploading to social media by tagging them you are getting the rewards hmm, okay and he did the entire this thing without like without writing any line of the code. Mm-hmm. The other guy's been also using the same kind of feature because this is geolocation. Uh, it's called geolocation based AR, mm-hmm. where you can put the content in a certain location. Let's imagine in front of your office we have this statue of the the, the men's. How oh, right. it's in English? I don't the know. Men, the men. Yeah. <laughs> so imagine you are placing the fragment of that film right there Mm -hmm. but it's not on a physical uh object Mm -hmm. it just hangs in the air whoever comes there with the app they can unlock this experience and they can see the fragment of the movie right 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 there right so we are attaching the content to physical objects this this one is called geolocation based ar Uh, and now we are also working on the the other thing which is called vps that's even interesting thing that's that's the next what is coming 
It's a visual positioning uh, system where the program understands not just geolocation like a GPS, but the face of the building. Mm -hmm. And then we can have the AR experiences happening on that building. Like imagine you have the opera house that you are creating some immersive experience right on the opera house. Mm -hmm. And whoever comes there and scans the building, not the image, not the banner, but the entire building, the performance can start. Mm -hmm. So we did one big project last year for the owner. It's a Chinese mobile device manufacturer. So they, they've been looking for like who can do this and they ended up by finding us and we made the very interesting experience in Hamburg city in Germany prior to their new device launch mm -hmm. last year. And in their, uh, all the presentation uh, what was made in this point that the owner is investing into the AR and AI. Right, right. So we are heading into new exciting world yeah. where uh, the content will be all around. Mm -hmm. One thing when you were saying the, the statue of the men in front of our, our, our office, as AI gets better as well and things like segmentation work really well, things like uh, image generation and things start improving a lot. Do you foresee like a future where I can point my AR app at the Arlupa, this, hopefully. The Arlupa app, yes. <laughs> <laughs> at the uh, at the statue and the statue start yes talking moving and talking even more and, it will be ai based so you can ask the questions right, related to the to field directly and stuff yeah and you can ask like why this scene was made in that movie yeah, and they yeah. can be able to answer yeah so so the ai the advancements in ai are helping the ar field as well absolutely yeah. it gives a life yeah like a uh, few years ago when I was like uh, writing on the Facebook, like we did the interesting project with Syat Nova, which is like very known. We did, uh, we worked with the many museums. We had one with the, the with the Tumanyan, Ovanes Tumanyan Museum and in front of the statue. Now you can see the interactive version of Ovanes Tumanyan. When, uh, like, when, so uh, right now, when you point at it, it's not the statue that's talking. There's like yes, a, that's that's additional 3D object that pops up. Comes up beside yeah. the statue and starts talking. Yeah, yeah that's correct. And uh, that time, it was 2017, I guess. I was telling with, within a few years, we will be able to kind of like have the voice conversation with Johannes Tumanyan and ask about the different, let's say, uh, d different works that he did, like yeah. different uh, poems or whatever. And the people are saying, oh, this is like too sci-fi. She's going to yeah. come in the 50 years. Yeah. Now with the advancement of the chat GPT and the Long everything behold. else, it's oh, okay, it's almost there. Yeah. Yeah. I believe within a year or two, we're going to have that already. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so yeah, again, this is this is new exciting world that we are mm -hmm. hitting. Uh, and uh, I believe there's going to be so much interactivity, so much immersion. And uh, the most interesting part is that we need to make sure that we are leveraging. I believe uh, Armenia has enough content to bring into this new medium, new way to present it. And if we will uh, somehow advance it, we will have chance to share our heritage to the others. Mm. It's also an interesting way of preserving and like uh, continuing to prom promote that uh heritage and culture even internally right yeah as, as, as you were saying earlier like it gets a more immersive education experience a lot of people might not unfortunately be interested in reading like a tumanyan book but if it's something more engaging and uh, interesting then sometimes uh, we if we will go into the more philosophical aspects of yeah. this sometimes uh, people are complaining that uh, what, what you are saying this is not the way that it should used to be the answer is that uh, we have to deal with the progress. Mm -hmm. If uh, tomorrow's medium, if today's medium is the video, instead of complaining that the kids are spending too much time on the Instagram and TikTok, we should complain anyway. But we should also bring the content into that medium. If we want them to be interested in uh, different historical subjects, we should uh, be able to convert those historical events into the games, mm -hmm. into the experiences, because this is the medium that they are connected to. If let's imagine uh, I can bring another case. Let's imagine you are going to the school and someone brings the hieroglyphical writing to you. Right. They're saying this is super important. 
this 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 is our history you should learn by this way mm -hmm. it's not going to work because now the medium is changed now it's like a books and the same way we should understand that the medium is changing but i, I think the a lot of concerns isn't so much about the medium but rather the platforms right like the way the platforms are um advancing and understanding not us. even advancing and understanding us but the way the platforms are like um served to us are served in a way where it doesn't really incentivize uh congesting long form like meaningful content and it sounds really like sad to say but i have it's, it's just it's not as enticing for those platforms i think to for someone to sit down and congest like and like um consume a, i don't know 45 minutes of a Tumanian uh, documentary, a really interesting AR style, etc. It's more, they're more geared towards like 40 second, one minute, quick scrolling things. I feel like even one minute I said it and it sounds long. Um, yeah, point. I think you are right in the term of like those platforms learned how to hack the people. So they are understanding what type of content you are consuming more and our brain is looking for kind of quick dopamine portions. And context switches. Yeah, yeah, which which yeah, you, you switch every time you scroll, something happens, it's interactive, it's fun. So you are getting like some dose of dopamine and that makes you kind of like uh, entertained or you're getting some pleasure and you are keep doing that. Maybe there should be some regulations of like, and I, I believe in future it's going to be because those platforms also affecting, I believe, the people. Yeah. Including people's yeah. attention spans, right? Because yes. when you get used to every 30 seconds, the context switching, yeah. now it's harder and impossible to sit minutes. down for 40 yeah. minutes of, of a yeah, video. Yeah, that's true. We're going to speak about that for hours. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but anyway, we should bring the Tumanian to the TikTok as that, well. For sure. <laughs> if TikTok's going to exist, then the Tumanian will be on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, the, it's, it's, it's really difficult to catch up with, with this progress and to adopt the content yeah. because now it's video. In the five years, it's going to be AR or VR. Uh, but if we want to, if, if we really value and we understanding that this content should be somehow delivered, then we need to spend the resources and uh, convert the medium of those contents. Mm -hmm. No, no, I was going to switch. I, 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 I might talk too much. So no, 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 I, 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 to answer <laughs> some, some, some questions. The thing I want to uh, talk about now is the, the advancements of headsets. In, yeah. in the past, headsets were largely thought of in the VR space. AR was, again, I think most people's uh, experience of AR has been like a Pokemon Go style, like you point your phone and see it on the screen. Mostly it was mobile. Yeah. <laughs> mobile based, yeah. Um, earlier this year, uh, Apple made really big news by announcing uh, their AR headset. Um, tell us a little bit about, about why headsets even exist for AR, um, because people's mindset is still in the, as you put it, 2013-2015 era. And what is... What's expected to come with these new capabilities that these headsets provide? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think this is very important moment to make this like um, platform shift. Now we are living in an era where the desktop computers or laptops are going to be disappearing mm -hmm. within a few years. A few years? Yeah. Wow. It's a bold uh, thing. <laughs> uh, I believe if they will, they will create affordable. It is super important we should underline this affordable for people uh te the technology and the devices that the people can buy and this is going to be happening the same what happened with the phones technology like ar headsets uh, like apple's yeah. vision pro and stuff maybe the chinese uh, companies will bring the cost down or the force them to bring the cost down but this is definitely going to happen Imagine you have the desktop where you are sitting and working on your screen, right? Mm -hmm. Now imagine that your entire environment could be your digital environment where you can have the screens any size you want or any number of the screens. And this is like a teeny and uh, compact enough that you can carry with you. Mm -hmm. So it's not an entire big thing to set up or do. Uh, that's going to give so much value that the people are easily going to transit from Transition one platform to, yeah. to the other platform. On the AR side of the things, uh, it becomes more immersive because it's one thing when you are just like through your phone, this teeny screen experiencing something. It's other thing when you can have the bigger scale scene where you can be placed in. So imagine uh, any 
historical events if we are talking about the education or imagine you have here the lab mm -hmm. where we all together can do some interactive experiments mm -hmm. without having the physical gadgets so this size room can be converted to anything we want and we can collaborate we can work we can learn if we are sculptures then we can have our sculpture here of course there are many people who say this is not going to happen soon because we still like like physical objects physical right. things but this this transition is happening i think it's not so much the f so i think a physical object can be completely replaced by something purely digital the thing where um where i see and i'm not as immersed in the space obviously but where i see is it's hard for me to imagine in five years these things get fixed is like one i i've always felt like ar and mixed reality experiences are still too invasive like mm -hmm. i don't want something on my face for if i'm writing something for four or five hours right or even just like the the physical screen fixes a lot of things that i don't even think about like the lighting of it like how it appears regardless of whether i'm in front of a pure white wall or something mm -hmm. right do you think all of these technical aspects are really going to be fixed in the immediate horizon uh yes yeah. and um, apple vision pro is already sh having these capabilities that you are not feeling uncomfortable mm. spending a long time there have you had a chance to try it by the way yes yeah. but uh unfortunately i can't, can't speak okay, can't speak enough. much about it because it's under the nda but fair yes enough. they they invited us to the lab to, cool. to try the r loop up on the headset uh, so yeah i believe this is coming of course uh, to expect is happening into 2024 it's not but like uh, within the five maybe 10 years perspective i am i'm really seeing this platform transition so i'm seeing the not like a desktop computers Bingo. have no chance to survive so this this is definitely going to be converted and the, the the computer itself i believe as the smartphone now smartphone we are very attached to the smartphone which is a very personal thing mm -hmm. right you you have a lot of like uh data there yeah. that is private that is yours the laptops are uh, the desktop computers they are not that type of personal because when you are going home and living at the office it's you are not feeling that it's something like uh, purely yours yeah it's more of a productivity device yeah, now. you it's it's a kind of like a tool that you are working with the smartphone became our kind of companion for everything right like starting from calling a taxi to ordering the food and everything so we need to understand that the, the as a professional gadgets the desktop computers or laptops will be also having this transformation period and uh, our interest our uh, let's say belief in this is that and this is how it's been in 2020 in 2014 i was saying we have like 10 years ahead to build so we need to be prepared when the time will come what means to be prepared to create all these libraries to create the the recognition that uh, oh, okay this company is there for 10 years so to to build this trust what what, what is right. the brand it's right. a trust right that you can ask someone can i work with these guys and the answer will be yes mm -hmm. so uh, this is what our goal was like i was saying 10 years we shouldn't expect something like really big because the time is not we, we are ahead of the time right that time we've been looking like completely crazy now it's less crazy after the apple announcements and the yeah. meta and everything now it's, oh, okay it seems you know what you've been doing mm -hmm. and uh the one of the goals is to make our lupa studio advanced enough that you will create in our lupa studio and your content will be available on all the platforms mm on mobile on apple vision pro on oculus quest or meta quest 3 and right. ev everywhere and we've f we think there is a big value in that Oculus because Studio those that are going to compete with each other like right. you cannot make something on the uh, spark ar which is the meta's tool that will work on the snapchat right or you cannot make something on the uh, probably the apple vision pro that works on the quest they are competing right, right we are trying to kind of abstract that layer and create the r loop app for every of those devices right and then you can install the r loop app and your content is available on the quest 3. you right, can the install pro. the r loop app and it's available there right so this is sort of our bet um, to be platform agnostic, to create the platform that can serve to all. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, is a content um, 
to make enough content. Now I said like 2,000, but it, it could be 20,000. And also 3,000 what? Now we have 2,000 2, experiences in our oh, app, okay. but uh, it could be easily turned into 20,000. And the AI is the answer to that. Because now the time that you are creating like a chemical experiment, uh, 3D models, with the 3D models and some interactivity, it might take like a week or two. Mm -hmm. If we will come to the stage where we are with the text to image generation now, and you can easily create those 3D experiences, 3D models, then you will be able to create uh, unlimited number of right. the experiences. Like right. imagine you are asking, we need to showcase uh, the Albert Einstein t talking about this subject and the AI just generated the 3D model right. that you can have a conversation with and we want at the moment that you will use the Arloop app. This is our kind of like uh, hope. <laughs> and, uh, is Arloop, are you guys working on like um, a generation system for AR apps? By, by that I mean like I don't even. I haven't even seen this before. But like, is, is there like three D model generation and things like that happening already in the AI space? It's slowly coming. It's not there yet, uh, and that's kind of like a, some maybe billion dollar challenge that yeah. a lot of companies are trying to get there. Uh, currently, we don't have that amount of resources to sort of uh, pretend to invent it by ourselves. So we probably will leverage on some uh, pioneers technologies that will be there it will, if it will be licensing or it will be some partnerships but this is definitely going to happen and it's already some sort of uh, like the first glimpses are there even this last week we had the internal hackathon we are doing these hackathons yearly and one of the topics was exactly this hmm. like text to 3d, 3D generation hmm. yeah. uh, it's not there yet it's, it's not in a quality that, let's say, DALI is doing with the images, but uh, this is definitely coming. Yeah. And at, like at, at CVPR this year, the big computer vision conference, mm -hmm. Apple had a very large presence and almost everything was 3D modeling stuff. Um, so I think it's something that the big players are definitely super focused on. Um, so tell us why Apple Vision Pro was a, is a big deal. Like, why is this a revolution in the, in the AR space? Uh, I believe the first... Uh, the, the most important thing is like when the company like the Apple is showing their next kind of computing platform, it shows their commitment like to to take the, as we know, the computers now to the other level. That's, uh, I believe, kind of like a signal that uh, this is happening. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, that gives more kind of legitimacy into the uh, every <laughs> thing right. around, right. right? And we are seeing the... So the Oculus Quest, as you mentioned, it was VR headset till to Quest 3. Now it's became kind of like an MR headset as well. The MR being mixed reality. Mixed reality. And uh, the quality is not super good yet. Like you cannot spend hours being in the MR mode. But you are seeing that they are they are coming, right? They are like compared to Oculus, uh, or I'm always saying Oculus because <laughs> I'm old user. But it's Meta, Meta right, Quest yeah. Two. The Meta Quest Three is really advanced version, and you are seeing like projecting this in a let's say Meta Quest Five will definitely have the uh, like really high quality mm -hmm. uh, MR view where where it will be hard to differentiate. You have the camera and you are looking through the camera, or this is like real view. And uh, when those big corporations like the Meta, Apple, and the Google also announced the partnership with Samsung, so probably next year they will also bring on their device, it's big deal for the industry because mm -hmm. the, that's kind of like a proof that these industries are going to happen and to make, uh, and these big companies are having the agenda there. Uh, so our, I'm always saying that like our uh, vision where we will get within like a five years or 10 years, there is like a three, three uh, exits or maybe not exits, but three ways to get uh, is one of them is to make this platform supporting every headset. So it's kind of like uh, working with ev every single device that will be in the market and to create the soft advance, the software that will help the content creators to create in one place and leverage all the platforms. 
The second option is to, to think of like merging or joining some of those companies and putting our experience in the platform so mm -hmm. they, they, will, they will have it. Uh, or the third version, which is like very ambitious, but that also could be the option, is uh, to come up with some red glasses that are branded Arlupa. Mm -hmm. But of course, within the partnership of some of those big players, because not every single big uh, hardware manufacturer who does the phones is there yet. I mean, they are not everyone is making the glasses, mm -hmm. but if this transition will happen eventually, in order to not be out of the business, they need to rush. So like Huawei will have a glass, a set of glasses. Huawei already has. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, most Samsung of the brands, like the top it. top ten, has probably yeah. already. Even if they didn't showcase, like I have seen Oppo glasses, I have seen the Huawei glasses. So all of them are doing something in the direction. But I mean, like yeah, uh, these like simple frame. These are like like Snapchat came out with some with like with the Ray Bans and stuff. Mm -hmm. These are these kinds of like simple glass. They're not like goggles or like a full uh, like headset. the Oppo has very interesting device. It's it's like like a traditional uh, optic glasses. It's not bulky. It's not mm -hmm. big. Yeah. But the functionality is like very, very tiny. So you have the only kind of like a few messages like in you front see of your text your, uh, Yeah, you see the text that you get on the SMS or you see the if if you are in a, let's say, navigator mode, you can see the navigator messages or alerts, that type of stuff. But for uh, for bigger performance, uh, currently the, the physics are not allowing to have that tiny forms. Right. Because you cannot put that much the computing yeah. power into the teeny kind of uh, the, the, it's not there yet but probably within a few years the the we are seeing how the like uh, chips are becoming smaller and smaller so probably Same this will this, will this will happen when when in a teeny space they can allocate all the processing power all mm -hmm. the video rendering power mm -hmm. But coming back to uh, Apple for a minute, it's it's definitely a great validation for um, someone like Apple entering the space, especially with a hardware product. Um, but why is it technically interesting? Like from a, what, what capabilities does Apple Vision Pro have that we hadn't seen yet in the AR space? Um, I will try to without, <laughs> not without not violating NDA. Violating NDA. <laughs> Whatever is public. The, the quality is uh, is absolutely different to whatever exists by now. Mm -hmm. Right, so uh, the kind of they are sh lot of there was lot of concerns that it's uh, the quality is not there. You cannot have the kind of like detailed object, and as you don't have it, it, it creates some kind of rejection. Yeah. So they are they are worked a lot on the different uh, aspects of those device, and I know they are working for for many years. Because I remember when in 2014 we get into this space, we started building Arlo, but there was a one company, German company called Metayo, and the Apple acquired them. Mm. That was the signal for us that time that, oh, then something is happening. And even when they introduced the AR capabilities in the smartphones, we've been understanding that this is the Metayo's technology came to the mobile. Mm. And now the the rest is happening. Probably they they are already working ten plus years on these things. So the, the, it was a big deal because it was absolutely on the other level than whatever exists by that moment mm -hmm. in terms of the rendering capabilities, in terms of the performance, etc. So, uh, but the price tag is very high. We cannot like expect 3, 3, that every three thousand five hundred, as yes. they announce, we can't expect that everyone is going to have one yeah. at home. Uh, but I believe they That'll might introduce down, something else. For sure. So this was the pro version. We can imagine that there could be something which is not pro mm -hmm. and maybe not have all the features. And, and just cost, the price of the standard one will probably come yeah, down as well. Can, can be lower. And um, also the other aspect is that the by the time those technologies will be advanced more and the cost of mm -hmm. creation will get less. Mm -hmm. So I don't expect that this is going to be something in that price within like several years. Like uh, the Quest 3 costs 500 and it's a pretty solid technology. It's a pretty solid piece of the hardware. Like we have a developer that's that's fun thing. It's a new generation developer who is already working within the VR environment. Mm 
Hmm. And when the guys told me, I, like he, he, they said in the other room, a couple of times enter the hike was sitting with the device. I said, like, hike is working there. They say, yes, but I was thinking, no. <laughs> and I started often enter to just check. He said, like, I have three big screens in the VR. Yeah. <laughs> of course, with the current version, like in a few hours, your you eyes can get tired and, yeah. because you are getting like a um, light beam it close to your eyes and that creates kind of uncomfort but those are uh, solvable yes those are challenges that we have within the physics mm -hmm. and uh, probably those those uh, big corporations are spending billions on those r and d's to get those things sorted yeah. out yeah so um earlier when you were talking about the lower tech like uh, simple glasses and stuff mm -hmm. You said like we can read a text or something when it comes on our phone. Those are stuff that are like are most frequently most frequent use cases for phones, right? For that kind of stuff, emails, texts, calls, even stuff, maybe notifications. When do you anticipate that being something that more than half of the people are interacting with on a daily basis? Have a pair of glasses or something mm -hmm. on their face. When it will happen? Yeah. Oh. I don't know. I I think maybe like a 10, 15 years from okay. now that yeah. we will have like a half of population <laughs> having their own. So you think the like computer replacement as in like it's the productivity, the productivity yeah. device replacement yeah. will happen sooner? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think as a as a tool, yeah. it's going to be replaced sooner. So in, in our offices, instead of the computers, we will, or maybe not in the offices because uh, sometimes you are starting to feel that if you will get into certain level of the immersion, your office, like you can be in the office no matter wherever you are. Right. So there's because no point you, to have your, your avatar will be there. Right. Right. So imagine we are having this dialogue now, but we are in different countries. Yeah. And uh, if we will, of course, we, we like uh, humans are the social, very social in terms of they want to meet the people, talk. This, I believe, is never going to gone. It's going to remain. But in terms of lot of lot of work meetings that are happening because people are traveling from one space to other or traveling to the, I don't know, like for a meeting, they are taking the airplane, flying to other like state or country. I think most of those things will be replaced. The ultimate question is why Zoom is not replacing that. I was just going to ask. <laughs> <laughs> because it's not the same. That's why I'm saying when the tech will be that good, advanced so that then. you you it will help you to feel kind of like a handshake yeah. or uh, I don't know see the others like on the on the Zoom is very artificial kind of environment sure. you can easily can get distracted when you are on the Zoom yeah. everybody does That's this true. opening starting to check the emails yeah. if you are not active yeah. talking at the moment within the VR you can't do that right because your avatar because start. your avatar will, will, will not look to someone's right. eyes so you right. will be connected uh, so I believe this this kind of things and uh, also a very important aspect of those technologies is uh, to give another uh, another level of immersion that I believe people want to have mm -hmm. like why the cinemas were was big success. Because people were sitting at the cinema and they are kind of immersing themselves into that movie. Mm -hmm. Like that one and a half hour or two hour, you are kind of uh, within the Napoleon, within yeah. the movie. Yeah. So you are feeling that you are there. So imagine if this will be like exponentially uh, changed where you can feel that you are there. Mm -hmm. You can feel the weather. You can feel... The, imagine now cinema with that type of immersion. Right, right. It's not under the question, right, that the people will want to have such an experiences. Getting it into the home, I believe the first will be more kind of like a for work purposes. Mm -hmm. But when everyone will have one and the phones will be eliminated, I believe it's maybe 15 years. Mm -hmm. In in a way, that's the same same thing happened with uh, computers, right? Like first you had the productivity device in the offices, and then in the homes and stuff, and then f cell phones and stuff got so good that they started uh, replacing some of the other things we did with computers. Uh, I want to touch on two more philosophical things. First, earlier you said um, fundamentally humans are social, and they're not going to want all those experiences to be replaced. Like maybe the experience of being in an office with colleagues and things like that. But a lot of the tech that we've built that we call social <laughs> uh, over the last like 15 years has driven more 
isolation. Less isolation, less social yeah. behavior. How do you think about that with AR? Because if, if AR, like if the dream of AR comes true, in a way it might even be that effect on steroids, right? Because uh, like there's like that sort of dystopian picture of like mm -hmm. everybody on their couch with a... Connected to the socket. Connected to them, like it's dark and there's like blue lights somewhere, right? So how do you think yeah. about that? Uh, again, believing that the humans are social, I, I believe this is, they they will they will have always the feeling like to not get uh, disconnected at all. Mm. Even even with the smartphones, right? We are very sort of isolated. But when you have the friends gathering or you have the family gathering, if, if the kind of uh, activity is good enough, you are forgetting to check your notifications. So <laughs> <laughs> it's it's important to focus to have it's the, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's important to focus to have the quality time right. with the quality okay. people. <laughs> in, in, in this case, the right. VR will not affect it. But yeah, um, that's there is a risk in that. There is a certain risk in that. That the people might want to live in their own worlds yeah. with their own friend avatars <laughs> yeah. with their own like uh, non-human characters that they are interacting with but again we cannot uh, resist the progress if that's the next evolution we can't resist the progress but like the ethical consideration like i, I completely agree it's gonna get built no matter what um same with ai same with like social platforms etc but it's definitely concerning, um, like just seeing what social did to real social, mm -hmm. <laughs> real social life. It kind of concerns me the path will go down with with these mixed reality texts because, in a way, it's worse because now you're in an environment where that's your like reality, right? While while you're in it, and platforms can, for their own like monetary incentives, keep ingesting things in there for your consumption, for your, like influencing you and things. I don't know if it's worse than just like on your phone. Um, I guess like we're so immersed in our phones that we're already in that reality as well. But it just, it, there's something about it that feels like it's more invasive. Um, but I guess we have to wait for the tech to come to, to see what it's like. Um, but I hope we'll learn some yeah, of I, I, I would love to keep more on the positive side of the things. Sh so, yeah, because well, <laughs> I don't like to I just, I want to, I want to find a reason to be optimistic about it though. Um, like um okay if if you want we can get there. yeah because like for cause so, that p image that you painted earlier about um like if the conversation is good enough people <laughs> don't check the to be honest that's not my experience like unfortunately like i i often see like we're like sitting with friends like we're having a good time and like at any given point a third of the group is connected is disconnected or uh, yeah uh, at any given time right like it's unfortunate it's and i think it's even worse for people younger than us uh, and we're not that old <laughs> so yeah but there's mm. let's let's consider the other aspects like one thing that i was thinking uh, a lot of times i was saying that we should look into those technologies in the perspective of opportunities that we didn't have on a physical life sure so imagine there is uh, millions of millions of kids that uh, are cannot afford them to travel mm -hmm. but it's worth them to visit the louver mm -hmm. or it's worth them to go to the italy or see the vatican or that, and and makes sense right of course yeah so what if we will have the technology that can help them to overcome these physical barriers that they have now yeah the quality education do we know that this is a problem like even if we will take the armenian case and this gets worse by the time uh, with all old people that are getting older and they cannot work in at the schools, we are having the issue. But theoretically, those kind of technologies might help them to overcome by having the teacher yeah. that is sit somewhere else Undoubtedly. and teach them, right? Many schools in Armenia doesn't have the chemistry or physics mm -hmm. labs. Why they can't learn those subjects by having those gadgets? For sure. It could be looking as uh, trying to hide from the problems and mm -hmm. try to find the other solution for the problems we face but maybe that's the answer for many cases yeah with the advent of any new technology there's these considerations right so the, uh, under no circumstance should technological progress be stopped because we have these concerns i just hope that in the past we let sort of financial considerations drive everything and i hope we'll take some of the lessons we learned about um the ethical considerations on, on when I believe ethical social, side of the things should will be, be better should be implemented into, better. Into, yeah, into absolutely. Area. Yeah. Like and a, we've seen that there are good solutions, right? Like on like even on the social sides, there are ways to design platforms that are less addictive and less mm -hmm. uh, constantly invading our attention. Yeah, I think if it be regulated properly yeah. in a way that the uh, like the ethical aspects are just followed for sure. Yeah, 
then uh, we we would not sort of need to afraid too much. The problem is that the business is like a hundred times faster than, than the regulators. Yeah. So when the regulators are thinking something, it's it's already passed. Like They're when reactive, they are yeah. coming they, with some kind of like uh, resolutions, yeah. it's already <laughs> the new tech has been built. Yeah. The same we see with the crypto, for instance, right? Sure. So they are now trying to regulate something that ten years is already out there. Sure. Yeah. So, uh, but one other philosophical side of the things I want to tell you that you can also think about that the people are born in a certain environments or certain countries or uh, certain time. Mm -hmm. But what if someone wants to live in the Western, like uh, w w like in a wild west mm -hmm. period? Mm -hmm. What's the problem that he comes to home and like puts his headset and he has his second life there and he has the friends there and he just wants to live in that time? Why we need to <laughs> limit them to like, you get the point, right? Like yeah. if someone wants to be an astronaut mm -hmm. and he might have a kind of environment where he has the friends, they are discussing yeah. about a lot of things about the space and he feels happy by being in that community of the people. And from them, one is from Chile, another one is from Brazil or somewhere mm -hmm. else. In, in near time, we will not have the language barriers mm -hmm. because thanks to AI. Machine translation. We, we will, will yeah, we will, I will speak in Armenian. It can be translated into Portuguese and we can have the nice conversation. If we will think also in that direction, I believe this is also giving a lot of freedom to the people that they might not have in their physical mm -hmm spaces like we know there's many countries that like uh their passports are not allowing them to fly yeah. <laughs> right? right to more than five countries let's right. say right. but is the nature of humanity was created in a way that the passport the paper can limit you to explore this like uh, world or go anywhere you want no no right we have created those regulations Maybe these kind of technologies will be the answer to give this freedom back, mm -hmm. to let people to live in the environment they want, in the time they want, or to kind of uh, have the community they are mm -hmm. they they always want but they never find. Fair point. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see where we get. <laughs> I want to get even even deeper into something that's uh, for people not familiar with these conversations might find even stranger. A mutual friend of ours, uh, Targon from Magical Labs. Yes. I did a podcast with him and he, he introduced me to a concept that I thought was probably the most interesting thing I've learned while doing these podcasts. He said that most people think about AR and VR and mixed reality through headsets and mobile devices and things like that. He spoke about the concept of um, like neurotech devices and eventually something like a neural lace uh, being so good that we would be able to like think thoughts and that have that be immersed into our mixed reality mm -hmm. uh, settings. Just as a fun topic, what, what do you what do you think of that? I think it's a great topic yeah. for another Netflix series. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's it's very interesting. I uh, my personal kind of like a dream in a tech space is uh, to, and maybe I will work on that whenever I will have more time. It's to help to people to like. Have you seen Inception film? Mm -hmm. But like ten years ago. Yes, yeah. it's an old one, but the concept is crazy. So yeah. imagine you can be in the any dream you want yeah or maybe not you but like it's created by some hollywood sure uh i don't know like uh superstars that you can live that dream mm -hmm. the most kind of intriguing part of that and when i came to that idea that was kind of like a shocking to me i was i came to the simple idea that the most immersive vr experiences in our life is when we are dreaming Mm -hmm. because we don't know that we are in the VR experience, right? right? Yeah. So we, we, we are understanding it when we wake up. So if we can think of like a putting people into the situation where they can be sort of dreaming, but it mm -hmm. could be pre-programmed, that can help people to live another hundred of lives. Right. Because within the short time, you can live the life of the doctor maybe you've been dreaming of. Mm -hmm. And that could be some experience that you will live. Yeah. And in the yeah. morning you will wake up within yeah. the 10 years of like living as a doctor. Yeah. Actually, I just saw this startup a couple of days ago. Um, they just raised a bunch of money. I don't know like how valid the tech is, but I thought it was fascinating. It was, it was a lucid dreaming startup. For those who don't know, lucid dreaming is 
when you're asleep you're dreaming but you're in control of your dream yeah. there's ways to like train this your is, mind this to, is very close to what i'm saying yeah, to, so to they are more it? advanced yeah. than i yeah. because from idea they, yeah. they, they get into <laughs> the funding yeah. so through their headset that i guess you wear when you sleep yeah. uh you can lucid dream on demand so like every night you can be this, lucid this dreaming. is what i was talking so yeah, yeah it's, 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 it's yeah. hard to hear <laughs> they should they should market a couple for yeah please share years. the link with me will, yeah. uh, lucid labs you said right uh, I, don't, I don't remember the names now but i'll, I'll send it i to know you. some guys that are graduated from the mit i find there's uh let's say there's some information is there on the mit website but the guy was completely kind of, of uh diminished he was not on linkedin i was not able to find him yeah. i don't know maybe he works for the government <laughs> already so but there there been some research that yeah. was happening at mit that would be amazing like if I, if every night when i go to sleep i can dream about whatever i want and control myself in the dream that would you be can a, live many lives right you can, you can live another eight hours every yeah. day while resting that's amazing but uh, uh, as we know our dreams are happening fast yeah so instead of eight hours, okay, within yeah. the eight hours, you can leave eight years. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy and exciting. Point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that would be really, really fascinating. You're gonna have to come back in five years so we can do this again. And talk yeah, about how, how it goes. Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you, Appreciate Thank you for inviting. <laughs>